after I'd had, gone through periods where I was starting to get better and I wasn't feeling anxious so much, what then happened is I would have, say, for example, very bad neck pain, right? And I would sort of say, oh, that was just from the gym or whatever, but it wasn't. It was the muscles in the neck were latched on and tightened up because uh, the, the anxiety was firing that up, even though at that point in time, I wasn't triggered or felt latched in an anxiety loop. The nervous system was still firing up. So I used to get very bad neck pain. It used to hurt a lot when I was working out in the gym, made it difficult to sleep. But I'll go through the body very quickly about some of the physical symptoms that people can experience and why they are usually um, often mistaken and people go down all kinds of routes then trying to investigate them in great depth when they don't actually need that. They need leaving and just carrying on with life. But um, but getting more comfortable with them and seeing them come up, rise and fall, the sort of peaks and troughs of the physical anxiety. So if we look at the body, and, and I'll start from the head, um, you can obviously, you can get really tight jaw pain. I used to get TMJ, which is a, a sort of very tight mu mu muscles in here, which used to give a sort of clonking sound in the jaw. And then when I used to eat, it used to feel like the jaw was coming out of place on each one. And biting used to feel like it was all off and not on center. So that used to happen. I used to get very bad hay fever, uh, really bad symptoms of hay fever. Um, I used to get a dry eye, very bad dry eyes from anxiety. Uh, I used to get very bad rosacea uh, that used to come up from anxiety. Uh, all of these things from anxiety, I don't need to say that because going through it, but some of them were obviously genetically predispositioned anyway. So and I already didn't have, had some skin conditions like eczema that were then exasperated by anxiety much further. So things like rosacea was made more prominent. Um, things like a pale, very pale skin uh, that always, almost felt translucent. Uh, because uh, and I could see all the veins very blue in my arms and so on because I because it, the anxiety used to do that in relation to circulation. Um, then coming down, obviously very bad neck pain, all coming randomly. So you could just be out for dinner, not anxious really at all, and then suddenly bang nausea out of nowhere. So you were absolutely convinced you had a really serious physical problem at that point because you were thinking, how did this occur? How did this happen? What's the problem here with this? is when we get a new one, we think, shit, I'm about to die. This is a massive cause for concern. I need to get straight down the A&E now. Well, that's first the port problem, that call to action, that immediate call to action, which it does, where it says, right, you need to sort something out this second. That's the first thing. And then is, what if I don't know if it's a real threat? What if it is a real threat? What if I'm going to get in loads of trouble because of this? What if it's going to, this is a life and death scenario where everything is going to feel like a life and death scenario with OCD. That's the nature of it. So that's the next thing. Then the other part is the utter acceptance of even if it is real. That's what got me out of it. One day, you know, this was at the long end of so many bloody symptoms for so many years that I got to a point and I was just like that night, I just went, you know what, forget it. Because I can't live my life just constantly going on Google, constantly checking my symptoms. It's taking up all my time, it's, it's too much energy. So I said to myself, right, I can really, do not want that anymore. What's the worst that could happen? I'm dead anyway, definitely dead in the future, that's a given, I know that's happening, I'm definitely gone. We live a lot longer than humans used to now. So we, you know, we hold on to this controlled life. We're all safe in our houses and we think, oh, we live to 95. Well, I could be dead in the next year. I've got no idea what's going to happen. What it came down to was a real realisation that the worst that could happen was what was going to happen to me anyway. What's going to happen to me anyway. And I can't be engaging in that fight anymore. It's taken up too much time and I never died and every day that went past, the symptoms moved and morphed and changed. And the symptoms, they feel like a call for action. You think, how can this not be anxiety? This is so severe. This is so right. Like, how can this cause anxiety? This is something that's, that, that feels so different to OCD. Like, how can my whole stomach be churning and have constant diarrhea? How can my heart... heart be beating so hard I can hardly take a breath and even walk down the street? How can my vision be so blurred that I feel twice as short-sighted as I already am? 
most people have got something they're scared of, very scared of, and they've got chronic guilt, chronic shame, chronic anxiety latched on, and the intrusive thoughts and terrified of that thing feels life and death, and their complete focus is on that. But that can also come along with physical anxiety, physical symptoms, and the symptoms can then become more of a problem than the thoughts when they are quite sort of distressing symptoms. When something changes and brings around quite a sudden symptom, you're then quite concerned because you think, God, what's happened to my body? It's breaking down, like everything keeps changing. So that's sort of frust very frustrating in of itself. Physical symptoms, they get overlooked because if OCD was called, anxiety was called the terror disorder, it'd be taken a lot more seriously, but it gets brushed off, doesn't it? You go to the doctor, you say, I've got this, and they say, oh, it's just anxiety. And then friends and family, oh, it's just anxiety. Yeah, but it fucking feels shit. So, you know, that's the reality of it. Even when someone's saying it's just anxiety, that doesn't take away from what you're feeling at the time you know when somebody is stuck and feeling that it, 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 it can it can feel really bad at the time but obviously when you learn to wear it as an uncomfortable coat you work through the journey acceptance and so on it gets less and less and less and then it's not so much of an issue uh, like it once was like i could have 30 40 percent 50 percent anxiety now wouldn't bother me even when i had 80 percent anxiety you still do everything once i changed my perspective the perspective was key but when it's not when you don't understand all those things and you're in it it's very difficult and you you think to yourself, will this ever end? How, 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 how disabling this feels and nobody knows? Because often it gets sort of downplayed or it gets, the other problem is, it gets sort of overplayed as well, where you get people that are sort of like, everything's terrible and that's a 10 and that's a 10 out of 10, that's so bad and I can't handle this. And then the people who are sort of like really putting up with it difficult, then they think, oh, it's just a whining because there obviously are people that do say those things even when it's not that bad because the, the, because they, they behave like that. So it's obviously is something that's difficult. It isn't just someone whining, complaining about it, although that will happen with all disorders, depression, anxiety, you will still see those behaviours too. And understandably, for a lot of the time, when but when when it's not going to help if you're just constantly complaining all the time. You've got to sort of take responsibility for your life and move forward in the right direction. And you your whole focus is on being stuck. So you forget about all the life going on around you. And so then when you start recovering and that changes, you become aware of the life around you and it becomes quite different because you've suddenly been pulled out of that cycle.